All right, here we're going to look at another example of finding the area of a region bounded by two polar curves. So we want to find uh, what is the area of the region that lies inside of the cardioid R equals 1 plus sine theta and outside of the circle R equals 1. So again, I'm going to try to do a little quick rough sketch. Uh, let's do R equals 1 plus sine theta. When theta is 0, sine of 0 is 0, so the radius will be uh, equal to 1. At the angle uh, pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 equals 1. We'll get 1 plus 1, so our radius will be 2. At uh, the angle 3 pi over 2, again, uh, sine of 3 pi over 2 is going to equal 0, so the radius will be out at 1. And then when we're at, uh, when we go between 3, or excuse me, between uh, pi and 3 pi over 2, sine is going to go from 0 to negative 1, which means the radius is going to go from 1 to 0. And that's where we get our little cardioid shape. That's where the radius is going to get pulled in. But then from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, um, it's going to increase back out. So there's our rough little uh, cardioid here. So that's r equals 1 plus sine theta. Well, uh, r equals 1, that's just a circle with a radius 1. So let's see, this was one unit, one unit, that's one unit, and one unit, so, so our little circle here, bad little circle, that's okay. So again, we're trying to find the, re the uh, area that's uh, inside the cardioid, but outside the circle. So we're looking for this little shaded area right there. All right, so to set this up, Again, um, we're going to have 1 half, let's see, so we've got to take one of our functions and square it. Notice these, uh, these polar curves are going to intersect. This corresponded to r, uh, excuse me, till theta equals 0. This point corresponded to theta being 0. And the other point where they intersect is going to be at theta equals pi. So our limits of integration will be from 0 to pi. And then we'll take uh, the 1 plus sine theta, quantity squared. So computing that, that would give us the entire area above the x-axis. Um, that would give us the entire area above the x-axis that's bounded by 1 plus sine theta. But then we have to subtract away, uh, you know, the, the area inside of the circle. So to subtract that away, we'll take, well, that curve, which is just 1 squared, and again, we'll just subtract those. All right, so now we've got the integral uh, set up to compute the, the area. So to do this, it's just going to be a little bit of uh, multiplying things out. Let's see, so that's going to be 1 half uh, 0 to pi. When we distribute all this out, we would have 1 plus 2 sine theta plus sine uh, squared theta. But then we have our minus 1 left over. Well, I guess we can always simplify this a little bit more. Uh, the 1's will cancel. We'll be left with 2 sine theta plus sine squared theta. But again, on sine squared theta, we have to use our identity. So we have to use 1 half, 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, d theta. And now, again, just going to uh, rewrite this a little bit more. We've got 2 sine theta. This would be plus 1 half minus 1 half times cosine of 2 theta, d theta. And now I'm going to compute our antiderivative. So we've got 1 half. We would have, let's see, I guess negative 2 times cosine theta. Uh, we would have a 1 half theta. And then the antiderivative of cosine 2 theta, we'll get sine of 2 theta all over 2. And again, all of this is going to have to be evaluated from 0 to pi. So let's see if we can't start just plugging everything in here. So let's see, we would have cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is going to be negative 1. We'll have 1 half times pi. Uh, 
But notice we'll have sine of 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. So all of that will turn into a 0. So that's going to be our upper limit. Minus, when we plug in our lower limit, cosine of 0 is going to be 1. So we'll be left with negative 2. Uh, we'll have, well, plus 1 half times 0. So that'll be a 0. And then we're going to get, again, a sine of 0, which is 0. So let's see what we get here. Um, we've got 1 half. This looks like positive 2 to me. Uh, plus 1 half pi. It looks like we're going to have another positive 2. So that's going to leave us with 1 half times uh, 2 plus 2, or 4 plus uh, pi over 2. And if you want to, we could always distribute the half and even make this uh, just 2 plus pi over 4. So, all right, that's all there is to it. Again, I think, you know, uh, to find the points of intersection, of course, too, you could have set the curves equal, but uh, I usually, again, like to try to do a little polar graph, um, at least get a rough idea for what's going on. Um, and again, here, it's pretty easy to see that the, uh, you know, the points of intersection are gonna, going to correspond to uh, theta equals zero, and then over here at theta equals pi.